Welcome everyone to a new tutorial, my first of 2019. We're going to be doing the chai latte mandala today and I'll be showing you some new tools so you can replicate this yourself. First of all, let's talk about canvases though. Um, some of us are using these canvases because they're inexpensive, you can get them in a big stack, but they do tend to warp on the edges and I'm finding that I really prefer the gallery wrapped canvases instead. They're a little bit more expensive, but they are finished on the sides and they are hidden in the back and the stretching just seems to be sturdier and works better for big projects like this. So this is a 12 by 12 stretched canvas and I'm using a wide sponge brush that's a little bit wet just to dampen the gesso on the top of the canvas a little bit to make it more receptive to the paint. And I'm using the Martha Stewart Beetle Black Acrylic here. And it's pretty thick. I like it because I can really get complete coverage with one coat. So I do the sides and the front, make sure everything's covered, and then I go over it again with the brush in one direction, just back and forth to make sure that it is smooth when it dries. I usually dry mine with a blow dryer to make sure I don't get any cat hairs in it by laying it on the table. So now I'm marking six inches on each of the four edges with a General's charcoal white pencil. And then I'm going to connect these marks with my straight edge ruler here. And this is going to be creating guidelines or a grid on the canvas to help us get really nice symmetry with this design. So now I'm connecting corner to corner and these guidelines will come off with a wet q-tip when we're all done. Today I'm using these wonderful dotting tools from Mark Osteller. He's also from Washington State like I am and he sent me these lovely tools to try and the cool thing about these is he also sends these little sheets and you can take a tool and match it up to the sheet because each tool has two ends so you end up with 20 sizes of tools which is fantastic and then each end has a number which corresponds to the numbers on the practice sheets so you can really get some good practice with just learning how your tools work and how big the dots are using Mark's kit and today I'm going to be using his tools and I will be numbering them um, as we paint so you can follow right along if you purchase his set on Amazon. But first we need to get some paint colors. I, I thought of this idea when I was bored at a craft show and I, I had a canvas and I only had like brown paint and white and black and I was thought what can I do with this? But I had my little my little chai latte sitting next to me and I thought well I'll, I'll design a mandala in those colors. So I'm matching up the paint colors to the spices and then these are my new little paint pots from Hobby Lobby. They're great because they have snap-on lids and um, you can keep them for a long time. So when I mix up my paints, if the paints are too thin, uh, too thick, I add the Liquitex pouring medium or some uh, fluid white. If they're too thin, I add the iridescent medium or a pearl paint to give it more body. So when I mix them up in the jars, I'm finding that I have less bubbles than when I mix them up in an open palette, like I have done in other tutorials. Bubbles are the nemesis of people who do dotting. We all talk about it, and we're all finding ways to reduce the bubbles and the acrylic paints that we're mixing up. And this seems to really work for me, these little one-inch jars with the lids. I put my pouring medium in there, my paint in there, I stir it up, and I really don't seem to have the problem with bubbles as I did in the palette. So I'm mixing up shades here of um, three different metallic shades, three different brown shades, and then the white, the cream, gray, and black. And all the paints will be listed in the comments so you can see what I used. But basically um, those are the colors we're going to be using and you can use your own paints too. So I'm starting with number 19, but I have found when I'm trying to use a large center dot, I always get it off center because you can't see what's under the tool, right? So this is a trick you can do. Use a smaller tool and do your first dot that you can really see and get it lined up easily. 
So I'm going to use the number 13 with the white paint and do my first center dot. And that's pretty easy to line up correctly. And then I'm going to use the larger tool over the top of that. And just having that first white dot there is going to help me line it up better. So now I'm putting down my big tool there and it's, it's going to get lined up properly just how I want it. The paint is a little bit peaky though because it's such a big tool. That's often a problem with big tools. So just use a little manicure stylus and swirl that and get your paint to lay down flat because I'm going to be doing top dots later. So next we're going to be using this small tool to do dots on each of the guidelines. Very easy. And the tricky part now is you want to get two dots in each of those spaces. So make sure that your white paint is a little bit on the thick side because you don't want it to pull out from your tool and then blend into the dot next to it. I like the Martha Stewart wedding cake for my white satin because it's got a lot of body to it and it stays in place. So now that that is done, we're going to be starting on the guidelines with the gold. One on each of the guidelines, as close to that center ring as you can. And then going to the light brown and putting a dot in between each of the gold dots. Now moving up a size in the tool with the white paint again and again on the guidelines. And then using the smaller tool also on the guidelines we'll be doing three white dots on this guideline. Just using the next lowest number it's the wonderful thing about Mark's tools, you can really get exact sizes because there are 20 different tools and you just walk them down by number to walk your dots down to a smaller size. So now we're back to the light brown again. I'm going to fill in that space between the guidelines. And then we'll be adding a larger dot in this light brown right on the guideline. And just try and line that up so the guideline is running right down the center of your dot. Turn your canvas if you have to to get the right angle so you can see what you're doing. Back to the white paint again here and adding another white dot on the guidelines. And then a smaller white dot on either side. Makes a like a little Mickey Mouse head there. Back to the gold. And we're going to walk those toward the guideline and do that on each of the radials. I found that Mark's uh, smaller tools were just fine for walking the dots. I've been always using my manicure stylus, but this tool worked just fine. Now we've gone to the medium brown, kind of this chestnut brown. Again, just fitting that right in between the radials trying not to touch those tiny dots. Adding another one, a little bit smaller, working our way out. And now we're moving to the beautiful copper paint. Mine is the uh, iridescent copper from uh, Golden Fluid Acrylics. I love this copper, it is so vibrant. Really looks like a shiny penny when it's dry. 
a new penny. <laughs> So now I'm putting in two small gold dots to fill in the space here toward the center of the mandala. And using the light brown to uh, put some small dots around the large copper dot. And you'll notice I'm not walking these. I'm re-dipping every time to make these all the same size. Oh, little mistake. I always have my handy dandy pointy Q-tips to get those off while they're wet and then replacing them with the proper size dot. Be making another row of medium brown dots the same way these, I'm not walking these, I'm just making these the same size all the way around that large copper dot. Redipping every time to make sure they're all the same size. And try and get the same number on both sides of the petal here. I think I got about nine or ten. Now this is the bronze paint. Basically just some gold paint with a little bit of brown mixed in with it. Put a nice dot on the end of that petal. And then two more on either side. And now I'm switching to the gray. This is one of my favorite things of doing large petals on a mandala on a canvas like this. You can use two or three or even four colors around uh, the petal and then change the color as you're halfway up and it really makes for a beautiful effect. And on this one, we'll be starting with the bronze and then going to the gray and then ending up with the white for our smallest dots as we work toward the center. Okay, now switching over to a smaller tool to walk up some white dots. Just gives a beautiful gradient effect. Back to the lovely copper paint and we just have enough room in between the petals to put a dot in there. And then a smaller one also in the copper. Just working our way out in between those petals so we can start another petal, another larger one. This is the cream. Fit that right in there. Again, getting as close as you can to the petals on either side without touching. And then I'm adding a cream dot to the end of the original large petal. and then two uh, small ones on either side. And this is just giving more of a pointed end to that petal. Just 
just enough room to fit in two tiny little dots in there. We're back to the copper. I'm going to use the larger tool again. And this is a little tricky because we don't have a guideline on here. This is really just line of sight. You need to look across the canvas at your row and make sure that your dot is lined up center in between those two petals. I always like to reach across so I can just look line of sight down that row to get that lined up. Got to be careful not to lay your arm down on the paint though because I've done that before too. Oh my gosh, that's infuriating. So now I'm adding a gray dot to the end of that. Same thing, line of sight looking across the canvas to line up that gray dot. So now I'm going to be adding three bright copper dots on the end of this row, like little spice berries there. And then we'll be walking some white dots around the gray dot. Now back to that lovely bronze, just kind of filling in the space of that radial a little bit so it's not quite hanging out there looking too skinny. And then I'll be walking gold dots in the opposite direction this time toward the end of the radial. And now just a small white dot on the end of each of the large petals. And then I thought for the um, petals that are pointing toward the corner, I'm just going to walk that out two dots just to add a, a little bit of interest to the corners. So now the first layer has dried. Let that dry for a while. You can see that the copper dots are still looking a little clumpy. That's just because I swirled them because I knew I was going to be doing top dots later. It's a nice gold top dot on the center of the mandala. And some gold top dots for the first part of the main petal. There's going to be a lot of top dots on this, so bear with me. <laughs> it's one of the things I learned from Ginger at Traveling Kindness Rocks is to, to really just go whole hog on the top dots and put light ones on top of dark ones and dark ones on top of light ones and to make triple dots because it adds such wonderful uh, interest and depth to your designs. So I'm just um, patiently kind of showing you some of the top dots here and you'll see that um, I'm using the same colors that, that we've been using this whole time but just putting them on in different combinations and you'd be surprised at the different effects you get. You can never have too many top dots. That is my motto. haven't really shown you here I'm I'm wiping off Mark's tools with a wet paper towel and as I was working sometimes they got 
a little bit covered in paint, especially on the big copper dots. So I just run over to the sink and wash them off. But Mark's tools, you can also clean them using um, isopropyl alcohol and just soaking them in that and the paint comes off really easily that way too. And these tools are not going to roll away from you on the table. I've had that happen too and I have paint marks all over my floor because other tools have rolled away from me but these don't roll so it's great. He just thought of everything. So now I'm adding some black top dots and then some more light brown. Finally getting to cover up that little swirled area on the copper dots that were so big. Now some of the cream top dots. You can see that the design is really starting to come to life now. going to do a simple corner treatment here uh, with the dark brown paint and the number 19 size on the tool and then the 17 on either side with the same uh, dark brown. Just doing a simple triad and then adding a couple of the bronze dots just along the edge. want it to make too fancy of a corner treatment because the mandala itself is very complicated. So I wanted to go kind of a simple effect here, almost like, um, like a leather tooled effect in the corners. You can't really see it here, but this I'm walking some dark brown dots. It's just the lighting is a little bad. And then once that all was dry, I added some large black top dots which will um, blend in with the background when it's dry. So you will notice that the corners are finished but they won't really stand out. more top dots here. These are triple dots here I'm doing on these petals. Thought the brown was a little much and I'm done. <laughs> I finally put the tools down. But I love how this turned out. Um, this was something I designed last year and I had a lot of people ask me for a tutorial on it. So I hope you'll give it a try and if these tools work for you uh, from Mark's Mandalas, I will definitely design more tutorials with it because I think it'll be very easy to follow along with the numbers. So I let this dry and then I took it outside and put the Kamar varnish on it, two coats. It's a wonderful varnish but do it outside because it's stinky. Thanks for watching everybody and if you want to make my wonderful recipe for spicy chai, it's in the comments. Until next time everyone. Happy New Year!